Micah Daniel Zawanchis shares stories about her grandfather's expansion of Wanchis Fish Company and about her father and her uncles working at the fish house. I began working full time in, at the fish house in February of 2014. I, I grew up in Wanchis. I've had a shrimp. I've worked there on and off as I went right. to school, but we had a lot of transition at that time of employees. Well, my uncle Sam, who's number 11, is the president of the company and he's based in Suffolk. Okay. So he came down. So we would pack fish with my father and uncle Sam and I would be there and then also like other contract labor. Uh -huh. However, they are extremely competitive and Sam's job was to make boxes. And even today when he comes, he wants me to be on the other side to show me how fast he is. And he is really, really fast. The younger ones made boxes. The older right. ones sorted fish and shoveled ice. And, and um, I heard them, I was at the seafood festival gathering on Friday evening, and they were talking about how they were 125 pound boxes of ice because they were wood boxes that carried 100 pounds and they put 25 pounds of ice. And so they had to stack them. So the, my dad and his brothers are wiry and strong and just, really strong however they grew up that was their job uh -huh. let me see can I take this 125 pound box I think you begin to shovel ice when you could when you were strong enough to shovel ice you know you made boxes you shoveled ice you stacked and then the glorious job was working on the call table okay. however you had to work yourself up to that and so um that and they had fun they they played a lot. They were, because that was their play. You know, there's these hysterical stories of knocking each other out with fish and throwing uh, this and doing this because that's what they that, did. Their humor and their, they loved sure. to play jokes and games. And so, and whereas dad was the top, one of the five, top five versus the lower, you know, some of the younger ones. His first time he drove a truck, he was 16 years old to New York. Goodness. He did not have a CDL. He did not have those things. His dad said, I need you to take these fish to New York because you'll get a better price. And he did. Their dad, he said it once and it was done. Right. However, to, you know, to keep 11 boys in line, you would need that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. like somebody's <laughs> got to be in charge. Um, so, and he, he had a really strict you know, rule in an iron fist. I mean, it was like, but he was also a visionary in the things that he saw. So his, you know, I guess when you're 16, if you could drive, you took the fish to New York. Um, they grew up with absolutely nothing. They did not have money. They, you know, uh -huh. he would go to auctions or um, he would buy socks and things, buy a box. And you, you know, you didn't get your own clothes. All right. the socks were the same. All the, you just went there and got them out and that's what you wore. They would, they, sometimes they say of my grandfather that when he woke up in the morning, he did not know what he would feed his children that evening. And um, that, that they came from just nothing. That sometimes nothing. people wouldn't pay their bills. And my dad said that his mother would take him and whoever, and they would go sit in the office of the people that owed them money all day long. So we'll all sit here until, and then as they became successful, he had the first dry dock in Wanchis. But he had that first dry dock because he got an old barge that came down on a train from Ohio, and then they sunk it, and then they pumped all the water up out and then they had a, they would move the boat in then pump the water out and they had a dry dock and he, and he was a real giving man too like he would give you anything you know if you needed it and he thought you needed it he, he was just a give a giver um, he bought a fish house in Hampton in the 70s he sent it, it wasn't a fish house it was a square of a dock that was a hole in a wall that he sent my uncle Timmy up in the 70s because we couldn't access Oregon Inlet and so you know what? Oh, even back then. In the, yeah, in the 70s. It's back to the 50s. I mean, it's been a, in the 30s, I think they, they gave federal permission that there should, it should be a navigable channel. Okay. But instead of like seeing like, hey, we're going to have a problem with my boats. Okay, Virginia's a huge port. I'm going to send a son there. We're going to start unloading there. Okay. And so we have a fish house in Hampton. You know, when we can't get into North Carolina, it's a problem for us but it's not as a problem for us as others as we have another option. Right. You know? And so he was a visionary in that. 
I will send I will send trucks to New York instead of the local fish market in Elizabeth City because I'm going to get a better price and I'll get my fish to the market first. Uh -huh. And now we have a trucking company. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's evolved. I'm going to have a dry dock because I can work on my own boats and don't have to take them somewhere and then lift them up. I'm going to open another fish house because I can't get in, you know, and they're not fixed, you know, the government's not helping us with this. And so sure. instead of waiting, I'm going to go start another place, you know. Okay. So in terms of visionary, he was, and he was genius in that aspect.